you can buy fully equipped laptops for less than 100 euros. Ignorant or arrogant guys often call those computers toys. In course of this video I would like to explain that devices like this hold an enormous potential for a clever user. The laptop shown here is delivered with the operating system Android in version 2.2. You can get full access to the file system and the hardware after installing Linux on it. Adventurous fellows customized the boot process by what Debian can be installed on a SD card. Thanks a lot to those hardworking programmers. With a digital multimeter, the current running through the device and by considering the battery voltage, the power consumption will be measured now. While the laptop is booting, I would like to show you the components of this engineering marvel. The processor is a VIA CPU, type Wonder Media 8650, clocked with a frequency of 800 MHz. 256 MB of random access memory are installed, which is insufficient for most of the commercially available operating systems. To my mind, 256 million bytes should be anything else but insufficient. A headphone outlet, a microphone in, one Ethernet connector and three USB 2.0 jacks are available to connect external hardware. If the battery is not available, the energy is provided by a power supply with a voltage output of 9V and a maximum current of 1.5A. A 4GB SD card is used as hard disk. Besides the operating system, many software tools are stored at those devices and there is still disk space left. The display resolution is 800 to 480 pixel and it is even coated with a non-reflective layer, which I am missing at many expensive laptops. The keyboard is, let's say, expedient, but included in the low price. The same goes for the touchpad. Two tiny loudspeakers don't really speak loud, but they can be used to play acoustic signals. By using the headphone jack, the quality is suitable, but I don't intend to use this computer as a multimedia device. The energy is stored inside a rechargeable battery with a nominal voltage of 7.4V and a capacity of 1500mA, which is sufficient for more than 2 hours of operating time. Meanwhile the boot process is finished. A current of 270mA is running between the terminals of the battery, by what an electric power of approximately 2W is consumed by the laptop. The peak value during the boot process was 670mA according to 5W. Let's observe the correlation between display brightness and power consumption. By setting the brightness to zero, the current decreases slightly for about 20mA. When adjusting a value of 250, the current climbs up to 590mA, resulting in a power consumption of 2.3W only by the display. There is no drastic change in current consumption if the displayed background is black or white. Going back to a value of 100 brings the current down to 280mA, meaning 0.2W display power. By turning the wireless module on, the current is increasing for approximately 100mA. 740mW of electrical power are dissipated by this device. While doing some counting, the processor load increases to 100%, but the current increases for just 20mA. So let the computer do what computers are made for, computing. To do so, the command line is started in full view mode, because good software doesn't need a brightly colored desktop, which eats up your computing power, only dumb users are addicted to that. While talking about computer muggles, 
they often call a central processor with a clock speed of 800 MHz a slow machine. This first program demonstrates that they are wrong. It is written in the programming language C and it does nothing else but adding a value of 1 to another value, starting with 0 and ending after 100,000 iterations. Colloquial, this procedure is called counting. Another feature is inserted to the code lines, which clocks the time needed for the whole process. The text is transmitted to machine code by the compiler GCC and finally the program is started. The processor load is increasing to 100%. As you can see, the computer just needs 5 seconds to count from 0 to 100,000. That's very quick while considering how long a human being would need to do the same thing. You can get some practical benefits of those enormous computing power by connecting an interface to the world outside the computer housing. The board shown here is equipped with 6 H-bridges, 2 single power transistors and 2 servo connectors. Additionally, 3 analog to digital converters and one counter can be used as input sensors. The central device of the board is another tiny computer. An Atmega 816PU with a clock speed of 16MHz, 1KB of RAM and 8KB of program memory. Both units are connected to each other by an USB interface. With the help of another board, the Atmega has to be programmed before using. After transferring the machine code and inserting the microcontroller, the development board can be used. Our first program was nearly free of practical benefits. Nevertheless, counting is an important work done by computers, which will be demonstrated with the help of the development board and the laptop. Electric pulses are counted, which are triggered by drops falling through a light sensor. The counting work is done by the Atmel chip and the accordant values are requested and added up by the laptop. The volume of a single drop can be determined experimentally, hence the total volume of the liquid dripping out of the upper container can be calculated by the laptop. Could you count the single drops? By no means, this is a slow computer. This arrangement can be used as a rain gauge or to measure the exact volume ratio of educts at a chemical reaction. Titrations can easily be done by this tiny computer. With the help of the analog to digital converters, analog voltages can be converted into digital numbers. Here you can see a potentiometer operating as a voltage divider, hence the analog to digital converter can detect the current position of the sliding contact. The two additional channels are used to detect the voltage output of two batteries. The voltage output of the discharged battery is lower than those of the freshly charged cell. The voltage drop while connecting a load to the batteries can also be detected. Measurements like that are important while building a charging station, respectively to monitor the discharging procedure of batteries. Many sensors can be implemented by using analog to digital converters. Two more examples are a wind and a temperature sensor, which have to be calibrated experimentally to get meaningful values. Besides receiving values, the laptop can also switch electrical devices with the help of the board. A simple thing is turning the four LED lights on respectively off, which can be done very quickly. If the speed of the process increases, the human eye can't follow the single switching operations. The two tiny computers are faster than your eyes. By using a certain ratio between turn on and turn off time, the intensity of the LED lights can be varied. Those method is called pulse width modulation. So create your own light show with the help of the laptop. 
variable pulses are used to actuate servos. The pulse length is transformed into a certain angle of the servo lever. The servo used here is controlled by a single pulse between 1 and 2 milliseconds over a period of 20 milliseconds. Are you able to count milliseconds? Many robot arms are actuated by servos, same as the camera arm of my lander. Next, an electric motor is controlled by the two tiny computers. By using an H-bridge, the polarity at the terminals of the motor can be altered. Hence, the motor can rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise. Once again, the output power, thus the revolution speed can be controlled by pulse width modulation. By reading the position of the potentiometer and passing those value to the pulse width modulation, a virtual throttle lever can be implemented. A special kind of electric motors are the so called stepper motors. These motors are controlled by turning inductors on or off, respectively by altering their polarity, by what they start rotating for a certain angle. 200 steps cause a movement of 360 degrees at the motor shown here. Did you count the 200 pulses? The laptop and the microcontroller did. Stepper motors facilitate a very precise movement. Three stepper motors and one servo are controlled by the board at this arrangement, which is called plotter. The speed limit of movement is caused by the poor output power of the used stepper motors, not by the computing speed of the laptop. While the plotter needs 22 minutes to create the drawing, the laptop can do the pure calculation work in just some seconds. In doing so, more than 100,000 steps have to be calculated. So the laptop can create its own tattoo, something even very expensive and noble computers can't do. The electric input power of just 4 Watt is sufficient to control even huge output power. This combustion engine has an output power of up to 21,000 Watt. If you take another laptop, yes, they are also available in pink, you can control the first computer by the second one over far distances. That's what you can also do with different operating systems, as you can see when controlling the camera equipped rovers inside my RoboSpatium. Or what about the automatization of your household? Water your flowers from any place at this planet with an internet connection. Feed your goldfish. Or do a remote dog walk. The software installed at this laptop, thus the operating system Debian Linux, the GNU compiler or the tools to flash the microcontroller are freely available and may be downloaded and installed whenever and wherever you want. By using knowledge and some fantasy, those colored, cheap, tiny computers are anything else but toys. They are great tools for science and education. Toys are devices equipped with brightly colored, high resolution desktops designed only to push around colored icons. You know what I mean. In this spirit, be constructive without being limited by freshly impertinent licenses or brightly colored program interfaces. <laughs>